everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, this is Edith uh, speaking from your cities. Welcome to this uh, webinar from, uh, organized by Guidance and the Green Digital Charter. I will put the focus on smart lighting today. Um, just a short introduction about the Green Digital Charter. Um, the Green Charter is uh, an initiative led, led by your cities. Uh, now uh, 50 signatories. <coughs> the signatories commit um, to um, to the commit while the charter. They commit to cooperate, promote best applications and results of ICT solutions among each other. They also commit to establish local partnerships to implement their commitments. Um, they commit to deploy large-scale and replicable ICT pilots within first and communicate these impacts to the sense and local stakeholders. And they also commit to decrease the dark carbon footprint of the ICT sector by 30% within 10 years. So, the digital charter is uh, organizing diverse activities and is supporting the cities to uh, um, implement their commitments. Uh, the training activities. This is the fifth webinar organized by uh, Gaiden. I have another webinar planned on the 7th of November on Green ICT. Um, you can uh, follow the link or write down the link of Bitly. You will be able to uh, um, go to our website and see the link to register. Um, we also organize on site trainings and work shadowing visits. Regarding visits, uh, GDC signatories are receiving uh, help, uh, finan financial help to uh, to organize visits. And uh, if you are interested in organizing a visit, you you should contact me and let me know. Um, we have also diverse publications and promotion material. Um, I will not give like details, but if you're interested, you can go on our website and you can watch. As so our videos on the Green Digital Charter that you find on our YouTube channel. Um, also, the Green Digital Charter is a place for our signatories and other cities to really cooperate and create a link. So it's um, a networking opportunity for, for the cities and the opportunity to exchange on best practices and knowledge to implement the city projects for smarter. Um, you are listed, so you see on the screen the diverse events that we're organizing uh, or participating to. Um, next is the um, Eurocities Joint Knowledge Society and Mobility Forum meeting. In November, we are going to the Smart City Expo World Congress in Barcelona, a joint stand with the Lighthouse uh, Project and an innovation partnership for smart cities communities. And uh, we attend, and we have some uh, visitor passes uh, free. So you are a GDC signature, and you plan to go to Barcelona at this date, and interested to uh, come and, uh, and participate in the stand with us. You can also uh, contact me if you're interested. So for these passes, is first come, first saved. So please let me know as soon as possible if you would like to have one. Um, next uh, next year in January, we're organizing the um, award ceremony in the front of the Knowledge Society Forum. Um, in this frame, we are presenting the work of our signatories, and um, we will await a winner um, the invitation of Smart City Solutions. Also, if you want to have more information, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, today, uh, this webinar focuses on smart lighting, and so with experts with us giving to uh, present their work. It's a lot for for business today. Uh, I will give the floor to Arthur Norhok, who is advisor and project leader at the City of Eindhoven. 
the presenter right to author. For uh, for the delay and the uh, taking over the presentation, Arthur is there, but uh, obviously is not uh, in, hearing me. Uh, still need audio. Um, any oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Someone is in. Uh, do you mind starting with your presentation? Because I, I think that Arthur has some uh, connection issues and uh, you don't have any um, an action with him. So would you mind starting the, the webinar? So do you have y'all there? Um, I'm checking. Uh, it's still there, but uh, you also cannot connect to the audio. Hmm. So I was like uh, showing everyone how to do that previously, but uh, I don't know why. Hmm. But I, I have to take his part. Uh, Okay, I give you well. the, um, mm -hmm. the presenter right. Sorry about that, <laughs> everyone. So, screen. Well, I have to go. Uh, then I share my screen, and then I. Okay. Yes, perfect. Is, 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 okay. What? Yeah, and see your screen. That's that's great. Thank you very much. So I, I haven't uh, introduced you, so maybe uh, maybe you can introduce yourself because I was sure Arthur will be uh, starting. So yeah, thank you much. Mm. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ingjerd Bratterud. I'm working for the city of Stavanger in the parks and streets department, uh, working uh, primarily with new projects. Uh, this present, in this presentation, I always, or also uh, um, uh, should my colleague, Jarl Hoxha, who is the project manager for road and street lighting in uh, a company uh, we uh, cooperate with, Lisa. At some uh, words about uh, the city of Anger. We have about 130,000 inhabitants. Uh, we have a very high density of people here. Uh, that's why we are working hard to give the citizens the possibility to enjoy to stay outdoor. This is important of health issues. Together with this, light is very important. I have a very long dark season here in the north of Europe. So there is also the oil capital of Norway. Uh, not, uh, uh, it's not 
of the best thing to be in days when the uh, oil price is uh, so uh, low. But uh, anyway, we have benefited from that for uh, many years. And we also have uh, a university uh, here in uh, in uh, Stavanger. Uh, just to show you where Stavanger is located in Norway, it's on the southwest coast. Here you also can see uh, a picture from the city center of Stavanger, where the fjord is uh, coming into the to the, the heart of uh, the city. So now I'm going to take you uh, 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 along the lead story of uh, Stavanger. And uh, then I have to um, um, to take also the presentations that uh, that my colleague Paul should do because I, he's not connected, as I understand. But he's working for uh, the Lisa uh, company, and uh, Lisa Energy Company owns and develops and oper operates all public lighting in Stavanger and its neighboring municipalities. And it's owned by 16 municipalities here in uh, this uh, region. Stavanger is the largest municipality and also an initiator for new and improved uh, solutions. In all, uh, altogether, Lisa has uh, 72,000 lighting points in public spaces in uh, in these uh, municipalities, of which Stavanger has uh, 28,000. Uh, I have to. Uh, uh, <laughs> The Stavanger, uh, uh, LNET started testing LEDs in 2008. Uh, since 2011, we have been used for uh, all replacements and new systems where it has been possible to use LEDs. Uh, Stavanger, there are currently about 1,300 lighting points using LED light source. From 2016 to 2019, about 6,600 mercury vapor fixtures will be replaced with LEDs in Stavanger. These are also uh, a useful uh, uh, connection with, uh, with effect, effect lighting. We switch to LEDs. We had a, a political uh, uh, decision in 2012 to switch to LED. Not uh, change everything, but use LEDs in connection with replacements and new projects. The main reason for this decision was to reduce the energy consumption and, of course, the costs. Um, so it was, both was important to save energy and to save some money. Uh, the lifetime of LEDs and lower expected uh, maintenance expenses uh, uh, one of the benefits we wanted from that uh, change. Uh, and light, with LEDs, the quality of light increased. Also, of the possibility to direct the light where the light is needed. And improved lighting means increased security for the citizens, a very important issue for uh, both the politicians and the people who uh, live in, uh, in Stavanger. Here, um, See an uh, example uh, of uh, what we what we uh, are expecting to uh, to uh, get out of the replacement of the six thousand uh, mercury vapors fixtures. Uh, it uh, shows you that the the reduction of both energy consumption and costs will be uh, uh, good. 
as we can see, in the end, we will reduce the energy consumption from uh, uh, 3,700,000 uh, kilowatt to 9,600 uh, kilowatt, about 70% in energy, uh, uh, energy consumption saving. And that is uh, very good. Even uh, uh, even the uh, um, the energy costs in Norway are, are it's very low. Uh, it also means that we have that we are saving a lot of money too. So, so why do we still? want to, to teach to LEDs. Uh, as I said in the beginning, the main focus, focus was on the energy consumption and costs. Now we see that LEDs together with ICT solutions opens up for new possibilities, so beyond the potential that lies in saving energy. It gives options for doing, which can, of course, result in additional energy consumption. And um, there's also a better option to uh, to manage the lighting, which is for both the environment and the uh, citizens. And street uh, uh, lighting can be used to create nice outdoor areas that invite in it to socialize and and uh, uh, to and inviting people outside for relation after dark and this is, this will um, give a better atmosphere and more well being for the citizens. Let also uh, give uh, the possibilities for more improved operational control. And it gives us uh, the possibility to connect various sensors that can provide added value. What important uh, when we are considering what we have to consider when buying LED features? It's uh, it's uh, technical design. It is the most in producing the fixtures uh, are always looking for low glare, looking for long lifetime, and also important the uh, reliability of the fixtures, so we can uh, trust them and that will uh, last for a long time. And so uh, looking for uh, uh, fixtures that we can. Uh, that's future proof. That means that we uh, they will enable us to to uh, for ex example add sensors, so we can uh, have uh, more um, service out of uh, lighting system. Uh, requirements uh, are that we have open system that will allow multinational final output and we must be able to control light settings from a central control point in the city and also be able to adjust the settings for each light point and uh, a software or hardware should be able to be added to each light point uh, in an area or for the whole city. To come, it, um, we are thinking about that the users of the public area should be given ways to adjust the light to his or her needs where possible, but of course in the framework of the local uh, government. The government should be able to offer users Use of the public area new and smart applications adjusted to local needs and possibilities. 
for LESH and ICT give many possibilities uh, when they're used uh, together. Uh, it allows us to use the light in creation of different types of moods in an area, uh, which will give added uh, experience. Uh, new technology provides better control of the auto lighting so that each uh, light system can be set up to promote being in a particular environment. We, uh, we uh, also uh, want to, uh, to use uh, the light uh, to, co um, uh, to, to, to play together with the uh, the situation. Uh, so, uh, in summertime, we, we don't uh, need that much light, and when it's snow, we do need so much light either. Uh, that the light can um, can uh, uh, play together with the, the hour of the day, the actual quality, and the body. Etc. It's possible to design systems that may have less impact on the circadian rhythm by changing changes the light conditions in the course of the day in different city environment. Uh, we, as we also mentioned before, the individual control of the light, more uh, social lighting is also uh, what we see as a possibility and control can be uh, uh, by sensors by mobile phones or other control activators the system can also be used for security almost in uh, in different uh, ways and see possibility face access to uh, guide tours in an area, uh, open training programs for spe specific areas. We can use the light to motivate, to lead the way from one point to another. And there is also possibilities for charging points for for electric bikes or cars uh, where it's needed. And we can uh, use uh, um, we can also uh, uh, map visitors. So, uh, the future for us all, I think, is uh, it's uh, towards a smart city. And the use of LEDs and ICT solutions can provide opportunities for the city uh, toward, toward being a smart city. That means that we need to introduce the latest technology technology to make the network of street lights smart, smarter, also a way of integrating services through sensors, cameras, speakers, uh, and so on. Uh, yeah. um, uh, mo uh, mo sensor for fo footpath, traffic counters, uh, rain, ground level temperature sensors, Parking space are some inputs, and uh, also for supporting all services such as security, parking, and tra traffic control. At the moment, uh, we have a discussion about how we can use poles or and the lamps for measuring data about both environment and climate issues. We are also in the beginning of a research and developing a project where we will use the grid of walkways to test out new services for the citizens that enables personal, personalized content and link between the physical and digital surfaces, both for activity and learning. There are really a lot of uh, possibilities out there. And in some ways, we are only at the beginning towards a smart city and uh, a smart uh, light 
is one of the starting steps. Uh, so that was what I wanted to say, and uh, thanks for listening to me. Thank you very much, uh, Nia, and everything for the presentation. Um, I'm really sorry that uh, y'all could not join. I have tried to solve the issue with him uh, via email, and uh, he's not managing to uh, to connect uh, his audio. No. Mm. So it's pity. Um, and we have the same issue with uh, Arthur. I don't know why, because we made those technical and uh, everyone could connect. Um, as you did, and now they are not uh, connecting anymore, and um, a delay, so he's not in the call. <laughs> so um, I would like to invite the, the participants to um, share uh, their experience on small lighting, to uh, ask you questions, to exchange uh, anything they would like to uh, to exchange. Um, in the meantime, I will uh, I will try to um, to connect with Arthur, but we can continue this webinar. Uh, so, everyone, uh, raise your hand using the little icon next to your name, um, and you yes. Um, Hello. Yes. So it's it's Graham Coakley here. Hi. Um, hi. Yes. How are you? How are you? And do you have a question? Sure, go ahead, please. So, a um, little bit of context. So, first, uh, Ingrid, thank you very much indeed for the, the story in terms of Stavanger. Very, very interesting to hear um, your experience. And, and also, um, if I'm not incorrect, you're part of the um, SC01 activities as well, um, in terms of uh, one of the, the, the city lighthouses. Uh, that is Britain. So, so but by, very briefly, by way of background, I'm involved in uh, something as part of the European Nation Partnership and also one of the Smart City Lighthouses um, around um, the Hump Post. Um, the Hump Post is, in, is seeking to do the smart stuff as well as the LED stuff. Um, uh, Peter Savanger, I'm, I'm very, very interested. You have a, a, um, a body which owns assets in the uh, 16 municipalities around Stavanger. So that's a, a good context to be able to uh, have a 100% publicly owned company, as far as I understand, that would deliver uh, best value for people. I have two questions for you. Around the scale-up, the speed of scale-up to replace the LEDs, which um, it's about doing it an awful lot faster in terms of accessing the very substantial return on investment for LED placements. So that's question number one, because um, I have some ideas around how it could be done faster. And question number two is really in, in connection with um, the business case for the smart features, the additional services that you've articulated in terms of environment, parking, traffic, um, security, and such like. Um, Typically, some of the cities which have replaced their LEDs find it difficult to justify the business case to do smart things afterwards. If you combine the LED placement with some smart features, then actually you're being more efficient in implementation, and uh, it can help to, um, to, to uh, implement the, the smart features. So one is around, is it possible to scale up faster, and you have talk that through, and question number two is whether you have anything by way of the business case for smart. Hope it makes sense as a start. I'm here to... You. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, first, uh, your first question, if we could speed up uh, um, to switch to, uh, to LEDs. Uh, well, as I mentioned, uh, energy is uh, is very cheap in uh, Norway. So uh, if, if we compare what we save uh, to the costs for changing, it's it's a uh, it's a big gap between that, and it will take many years 
therefore we can um, we can um, uh, uh, make it in bands. So uh, uh, it will be hard to 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 speed it up uh, unless we will have uh, we have to ask for a lot of money from the from the um, uh, city of Stavanger. I do understand you you have an environment with lower energy. So using the return on investment period is is over a decade. Typically, we look at six to eight years. It may be it's it's, longer. It's, it's longer. And, and your issue, so that doesn't mean that it doesn't that you can't replace it. That just means that if you're paying it from City Hall, then obviously you need to uh, you need to use your money for other things. So the the possibility of a loan uh, is there, and the possibility of a cheaper price for the replacement is there if you have demand aggregation. So what I'm saying is if you buy 6,600 lights over a period of three years, the price may not be as low as if you were in coordination with others, raising tens of thousands, um, which is the, the, the economies of scale. That's some of the European initiative which I'm involved in. That, that's what we're seeking to do. And in addition to the second question, of the additional value which can be monetized, parking um, and such like, as well as some of the softer forms of value can be added to the business case by doing smart things at the same time. Um, I'm whether that provides scope to, um, uh, to to accelerate the, the very good work that you're doing um, it up, uh, around the city. Uh, in together with uh, the SSL rate uh, project, we uh, we have uh, um, with a test site here in Stavanger where we have uh, uh, installed a new uh, lighting and uh, also uh, with smart uh, technology, so we can test out uh, different things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we, we didn't uh, succeed to have all uh, the light. Uh, um, produced uh, at the, at this, so we have uh, not uh, tested it out. But uh, I think we have to start uh, start with uh, test out uh, the smart solutions here uh, locally, and and um, and then find out what uh, what uh, is uh, um, what people want. And what they, uh, what is, uh, uh, what can benefit uh, from as, uh, as uh, the additional uh, services uh, uh, to light. Uh, when we buy these new uh, uh, lights for uh, uh, to uh, replace the, the vapor um, uh, fix, uh, then we, uh, it has been essential for us to to buy. Uh, Lamps that uh, have place and can uh, have sensor, you know, it uh, allows us to to uh, to uh, to have uh, to create uh, things that we want to uh, uh, to, uh, to to collect the data that we will see as useful for for city. And we have uh, businesses now coming to. Uh, to the city of Stavanger with uh, different solutions to uh, to uh, to make uh, things together with them. So it's uh, it's really I think uh, taking uh, it's uh, it's going faster now uh, than um, than uh, earlier. It's going fast now. Yeah. No, so, um, one final uh, point, if I may. Um, Part of what you're doing is experimenting, naturally, not just so much in the technology, but in the, the application and the acceptability of the technology mm. in different locations. And experimenting alone can feel a little uh, resource intensive. And look, um, one of the, the ambitions we have as part of the European program is to try and join up those that are uh, same state as yourself, um, not necessarily in the same location. Um, south of Europe, east of Europe, etc. But there are some others in the northern parts that are doing things. Um, do you feel that you're uh, networked amongst the cities that are doing these sorts of things sufficiently to learn and share business cases and contrast differences? Uh, 
Uh, well, yes, um, the S S L R A T E project has uh, has uh, brought us to some European that uh, we have shared uh, experience with, and it has also uh, given us the opportunity to to network with other cities in uh, in uh, Norway, and of course uh, uh, this. Um, um, we're energy um, company. We are 16 municipalities together. There we also share uh, uh, things that happens and in which way we want to uh, to go. So, uh, so networking is uh, is important. Yeah, good. So I'll take no more of your time. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much to both of you um, for this conversation. Um, someone else uh, raised his hand in the in the list. Uh, it's Balas Hepai. Sorry for the pronunciation. I'm sure it's wrong. So I, um, if you want to intervene, please uh, go ahead. Okay. Thanks. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Balas Hepai from uh, Hungary. I am working at. Uh, 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 one of the largest uh, en energy company uh, here in Hungary, uh, originated in Germany. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have uh, questions. Uh, uh, the first one is about uh, financing. Uh, who uh, financed uh, these uh, 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 projects? Uh, what was uh, the business model? Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, the uh, the financing of uh, the municipality, or uh, it was combined with some kind of uh, grant, or any anything uh, else. Second one is uh, uh, who is um, um, operating uh, and maintaining uh, these uh, systems, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, showed some kind of uh, difficulties um, uh, compared to the the the, uh, the previous uh, systems. Your question about financing, it's all 100% paid by the municipality, all we doing uh, today. So uh, there uh, well, uh, uh, maybe not uh, quite 100% uh, correct because now we are doing this uh, great project with, um, with this um, uh, where we get a little grant from uh, from uh, the government uh, to to that but that that we have to share with uh, all the 16 uh, municipalities so so uh, very much is paid by the, the municipality and so no so no market sorry so no uh, uh, commercial banking or or any other uh, support for this no okay and was uh, uh, can you uh, just repeat it? Uh, uh, who uh, maintaining and operating uh, this new system? Is it in the hand of uh, the municipality? And uh, does it uh, did it show uh, some uh, difficulties or uh, differences compared to the previous system? No, um, uh, we have this uh, um, an energy company, and yeah. Uh, Owns and uh, and operates all public lighting in uh, Stanger and also the neighboring uh, municipalities. And uh, they have mm -hmm. done it uh, before, and they're going to do it uh, in the future, as far as we can see. Mm -hmm. And and the the energy company is owned by the municipalities. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank both of you. Um, great. Uh, so we managed to have uh, Arthur uh, on the line. So Arthur, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Very well, thank you. Great. That works. So yes. we can uh, continue maybe with your presentation. Yes. So giving you the presenter right. So you can... Um, you can share your screen and uh, start uh, your presentation. Sure. Uh, 
Within the municipality of Eindhoven, and I was involved in the transition of our vision for the lighting six years as an advisor and project leader for the of light. And today I will share with you some experiences we have in this transition from smart light to a smart society. Two hundred twenty six Eindhoven is the fifth city of the Netherlands. Close to the southeast of the country, the center of the Rainport region, Eindhoven, the technology region in Eindhoven, Europe, crept by its unique and successful way of cooperation between the 21 municipalities and the companies and those institutions in this region. As for cooperation, was awarded by the U.S. cities with the cities 2010 Cooperation Award. In 2011, the Intent Community Forum awarded Eindhoven the most smart region of the world. And in addition to design and sports, innovative lighting are themes that characterize this area. The Eindhoven is to improve the quality of life thanks to a newly developed products and services based on a smart lighting grid. The value of light increases is also recognized by the European light industry. We have published their strategic roadmap. Increase in value of light is presented. What since in the past intended to support road safety and social safety, we see more aspects are involved to improve the quality of light. Lighting installations to save energy, lighting systems to improve sustainability, care, and finance into lighting installations that focus on the well being of people. What are the of Eindhoven regarding the replacement of lighting with LED? In the Netherlands, Eindhoven started in 2009. To end uh, in outdoor lighting applications. In residential areas, high sodium luminaires were have been replaced. Bipolar compact fluorescent light sources have been resulted in energy saving. Placement with LED resulted in 25% extra energy saving. Also implemented in sport parks. It results in decrease of light spill, light pollution, glare, and energy use, but also in flexible, flexible management. Now, to illuminate only half of the fields in case of train sessions to keep the light level, depending on play match or a training course. In the Axe in Eindhoven, lighting was combined with the text detection centers. The LED resulted in energy reduction of 40%, sensor control with 20% more. Eindhoven are deeply entwined in history. The movie ignited the spark that heralded the start of the industrial era during the, the 100s. In the 19th century, Philip used the city for its light bulb factory. 
And today is the test bed for lighting innovations. Combined light and LCT will result in smart lighting, bringing new possibility, possibilities. Well, I have asked some uh, stakeholders. I will uh, quote from our former mayor, Rob van Heysel. He was telling that the race of Philips lead to big growth for the city of Eindhoven. This technology boom also resulted growth of our technical university and other famous research institutions. We have a density in the world. And Paul is really looking how to improve the quality of life. Because is an issue and is something we are also looking at. But it's about the quality of urban area, the architecture, the space and how people's activity can be announced through lighting, through the way they use the space. And it's interesting when you start to think about how people, citizens, adults, can they have a role in deciding what we are going to do with this lighting. Better professor at the Technical University saying that you really need to figure out what binds people in a common goal and how to assist them. If we need an attention shift from the goal to the game or in the in case a shift from the lighting itself, the way we use it and play it. It will be recognized by the people themselves. Here you see the right mind. Who is saying that within 10 years you don't recognize this city anymore? You have to play with light. Should you consider all the spheres, which are stones and light bulbs, then they will suddenly become spheres where you go from one sphere to another sphere in the city. Here, they come up. Uh, will bring us completely new implementations, completely new ideas that we can do with the city. And so, in the future, we have quite a few surprises about how we develop most the thing, but also the other facilities in the city. We explore the future, we get the people, and we create our own city, is what Rob van Heitel was. Simple is the answer from Marianne Schroes. We want to improve the lives of the people in our city. We want to really focusing on what is relevant in the public space. Light is one aspect. The important thing is this together. Together we can create a city, society, life that is really good. But it's up to you. People are being involved. Therefore, in 2012, we started a vision and document. It has a step, it's a roadmap, and right which steps we should take to achieve the ambition of the city. We will have this vision and roadmap, and lighting, until 2030 the key to unlocking a whole series of impactful social experiments. The common goal of inspiring others to help create a smarter society. Hoover aspires to expand its visionary leadership in urban light. The next chapter in the city's heritage. We ask across the world to join us on the journey and share in our success. Tell you about uh, the cycle we went through to be a future proof city. First of all, we're thinking about our ambition. And therefore, we use maturity to 
satellite was developed with the university. And that is a maturity tool. It has four legs. All good or bad, because each level uh, is a level to grow. The maturity tool is 11 cities and a European context. And how we started, and, uh, and now in 2016, we uh, uh, are hoping to reach the uh, levels marked by orange dots. We did make it. We also made a forecast uh, for 2020. Uh, it's a, a political one, but because you see that each uh, green dot is uh, on the highest level, and that level that even Apple didn't reach. But over is a city with narrow level. The ambition of the city. Well, we are we have a, a visionary level, and we want to apply innovative technologies in a social context. With the knowledge institutions, with the companies, and together with the citizens, in what we call the Total Helix context. Ambitions, we develop a future vision, and therefore uh, we set up a future telling uh, research method. Uh, was used to identify the future trends. The future research methods use a set of cards with six future trends. Relevant trends were identified in interviews with CEOs in industry. They were asked what was relevant in the context of the roadmap life. Which trends will have the impact in future? With our possible futures supported by examples of experts from different domains were interviewed. Levels for change were identified. In the influence of information, the of uh, the perception of value, uh, the potential of people. Uh, three drivers for change left the room at the bottom of You have to uh, keep in mind that we wrote this roadmap in 2012 at focusing on sustainable lighting. And city, LED light is quite normal. We think more in adaptive ways. We think about lighting, adaptive future in the city. In the time, the adaptive systems, systems we are about. After this, we will get new goals. We look upon that we are working with different partners. And the map is also about combining the industry, government, non institutions. So we, where we uh, try to uh, be at 2015, 2020, 2025, and even 2030. We have an ambition to account the content of the roadmap light. And we wanted to put at a city level but to implement in a uh, department level. The next step before we are looking for our partner. We will achieve this ambition and uh, that partner together, a market, uh, market partner. If you are looking for a real partner in real life, we are looking for a partnership based on stress. We are on the same wavelength. Partnership, the market party has to show to be the expert. 
co-counsel is for a partner have to use the city as a thin ground in the years for development of intelligent lighting applications in public space. For Eindhoven was tendering this ambition, not a product but an ambition, to use the tender method competitive dialogue. The goal of this tender we set three market prices. So, uh, in the in the end of the pre-award phase, we will we will come to a contract in the uh, coming weeks. This we hope uh, to sign. The consortium fit Heimans, an international company in Heimans, a national uh, building contractor, did the tender. So for the next 15 years, it will be our prime partner for the city. And together we will improve the quality of life in the city of Antwerp. It's only about life. No. But the possibility to develop services to increase and improve safety around the area. Think of possibility to use smart grids, to combine these smart grids with smart mobility. Presentation shows how a part of the center of Eindhoven could be transformed in 2030. The lampposts are traffic lights. The crosswalk made by light grid is used to project your braking distance visualized uh, by light. These are all examples how light can fulfill new functionality. One of the leading principles in, of this tender was that we will be used as a living lab. Other roles in this tender are should be scalable, done open, innovation is a boundary condition, and all the yet the is available for maintenance and replacement of our lighting infrastructure is for this tender for the next 15 years. And to replacement and maintenance, and to organize the smart lighting grid, and to offer new services, new planning models should be designed. It will also be the result of this tender. The right thing will involve the end user, our citizens. They are the only one can judge if solutions fit or not. The yes, of the end user will bring a completely new smart city idea. We have all type of end users, citizens, entrepreneurs, all our people and young people. They are the user of the future. Cities without smart smart participation for all. So a light organization with multiple helix operations. Research needs living labs. Here you see a model in how uh, the different stakeholders can cooperate. Investigations will uh, go to analysis, then to an interpretation of results. For the solutions, citizens will be involved via an uh, online platform and uh, through co creation workshops. We will be involved to validate the concepts we will come up. And finally, uh, there will be a selection. Uh, the implementation of the solutions and the steps will go to an implementation. And primarily, the responsibility for the consumer. And they will also monitor and update and uh, in a contentment, they report. In the five years, uh, we will uh, start the five uh, living labs, our residential areas, and our uh, uh, space. And we can combine that 
with smart mobility solutions. If the city uh, or partner will be a preferred supplier, and we will come to integration of systems. fulfill our ambition to use the uh, added uh, value of likes in our society. Good questions. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot. Thank you. I think it's, uh, it would be great to have a uh, nice uh, presentation. What do you think? Okay. Is it okay I'm, with open, you? Uh, I'm open, but I missed the chat uh, box. So you can moderate the questions. Uh. Sure. Uh, for the moment, I don't have questions uh, in the chat box. It's on the, on the top of the screen on the right uh, on the right side. You click here and write your questions there. So I will thank you again, Arthur. Thank you very much. And uh, we can um, uh, give you the floor at the end of the of the presentation of Nail then for for any questions. So don't forget your questions. Uh, if you if you have anything to ask, uh, write it down, and we'll come back to, you know, to it as soon uh, as possible. So, so uh, I can hear. I will give the floor to Neil. Uh, no. Here. Can you hear me? Yes. Well. Brilliant. Excellent. You can share your screen. Uh, you have now as a presenter. So Fantastic. We can start can presenting. Can you see that? Thank you. I know many flat. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can share the share. Can you see that? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Neil Platt. I work for Balfour Beatty, who is the, the contractor partner for Coventry. Um, and the presentation is uh, a little bit through um, the work we're doing over the last five years that includes um, well, it includes um, traditional light replacements and columns. Uh, and the introduction of a CMS system, which we're looking to expand into the smart cities area. Just a quick one on, on Coventry itself. Um, we're um, a metropolitan borough that's pretty smack bang in the middle of England. Uh, we've got uh, 330,000 population. We're northwest of London, about 100 miles or an hour's drive. And we're one of the top 10 cities for growth in all of the, the UK. 
got about 54,000 students and important for the light network we have about 71,000 people commute through the city a day. Um, there's about 6 million people within Wise Drive of Coventry. So the project itself, it's EFI or Private Finance Initiative worth about £250 million pounds, or uh, what's that, 160 263 million euros. It's a five year contract with a five year CIP or investment program where capital money is spent. Uh, the CIP is now complete and we're running to year six of the pro project. So from year six to year 25, we're in maintenance. So, RIF and planned. We've based circa uh, 9,000 columns, lanterns, subways, and three centre lighting units, which represents nearly 100% of Coventry's assets. Traffic sign lights have been replaced with LED, and solar bollards have been installed. Uh, we've illuminated about 5% of the network, and we introduced a CMS um, system, uh, everything including the sign lights, and full redesign. So, consonants, moving your columns um, to maximise uh, the uh, growth. And Tractor is the asset manager. So, it, it holds the risk for 25 years and decides upon the investment and the maintenance required. The methodology was used uh, between 2004 and 2011. Um, and uh, it was to attract pri private equity into public infrastructure. It was used for about 700 large capital schemes, including schools, buildings, hotels, and, the light and public lighting. About 15% of the funding comes from central government in terms of a grant. A percent comes from the contractor, the private contractor. 80% uh, comes from bank funding. The PICO and the AMCO um, say um, a legal structure uh, draws money down from the bank and gets a, a, a monthly unit charge uh, once a month by the authority. The methodology is being abandoned um, mainly due to a change of government and a reputation for poor value for money, um, not in the public lighting sector but in, in other areas. Um, PIC 2 is currently running for schools and hospitals in very small amounts. Uh, been rescoped to show more accountability and uh, refinancing a share mechanism. Uh, public lighting uses other funding sources such as the um, Salex and ranking systems. So the energy uh, of the project, um, the total investment was uh, 292 million euros and uh, before about 39,000 units. Uh, energy in half with 11 million kilowatt hours at the project and that roughly equates to 1.2 million euros per year. The predicted savings were 38% in the um, bid term but actually we've managed to save 50% and that for saving uh, the, with the tractor is uh, incentivized by a mechanism. Non-meter supply. There is no no meter. There's no digital face to read. Uh, it's independently calculated by a body. Uh, submit an inventory every month, along with the event files from the CMS. So, energy efficiency and where the the savings have come from. So, 30% of the energy saving has come from road lighting, and they, they switch from mainly SON and SOC residential uh, to white light cosmopolis not LED. Um, so about 30% of the overall energy has given us a payback of about 15 years. The in trimming, um, which is um, all coming from the CMS system, about another 20%. Um, the time lights, about 50% energy saving on those LEDs. Um, and space and city centre units, about 70%. And that's the illumination in the main with with uh, a change to LED uh, uh, Addition, obviously, 
we, we chopped about a thousand units out of the project, um, and and uh, that is obviously hundred percent of the energy. Uh, solar bollards similar, about a thousand units um, and hundred percent energy saving. How we man, ma ma maximise the energy? All things came from full redesign. So being able to move the columns and give full column spacing, uh, and that was a value engineering project. That's where we incentivised the, the designers to ensure that they were driving the maximum energy. Um, Lantern optics were specifically designed for Coventry by Philips uh, against its road geometries. Obviously, mode being white light as well, uh, so we could uh, lower the light glasses slightly. Um, and trimming through the CMS system, Obviously, illumination as much as we could from the asset and the LED uh, in the ring road areas and all the bollards in the parks and in some places and bollards. BMS we used to we used to dim uh, and we're dropping to now the lowest extent of what Cosmo can go to. So um, 15 on any 60 watt and above. 55% on the 45 watt commodes, uh, and we're driving now the maximum energy saving out of those products. Uh, at 3518 lux, we can't trim any further than that due to the warm up periods. Uh, and we've reduced over lighting use of CMS. So, employing a pre dimming system. So, look at the design, dialing down units as much as possible. Um, so it's um, um, maximising the, the usage from switch on, and also uh, slow or constant light output. Um, we're harvesting energy through those inverse dimming curves. Um, oops, it's not just energy. Um, you spend 292 million euros and just get and the paybacks that we're getting. Although it's a you know 1.2 million pound a year. We were looking at other benefits as well. Um, uh, initially, the, the the structure, the column stock, was uh, in a in a appalling uh, state. Uh, so that's where most of the the spend was, and um, resulted in uh, improvements in road safety, reduction of crime and fear of crime, a use to the night kind of economy, not only in the city centres but in the local high streets, uh, safer routes to schools. We deemed we ensured that. In the month that uh, five um, kilometre school uh, will lead to a significantly higher level. Um, there's reduction in, in light pollution as well as carbon. Uh, well-being. We're seeing people access the streets for um, jogging and cycling um, in the darkness now because the the light is is so good. Uh, investment into the local economy and a community. And that comes by a, a supply chain trickle down. So we try and spend the money uh, as locally as we can. Uh, improved investment potential for the city itself, and training and apprentices uh, that we we take on. Next for us, uh, we will be looking into uh, LED products shortly. Uh, the the looping work that we've done so far uh, had us to believe that. Actually, we're saving so much energy currently that there is enough money in there uh, to fund a cap other capital program. Although we do think that in one of the years' time, with imprinting um, lumens per watt and the continuing drop of lantern prices, uh, will become affordable eventually. But we're seeing now products coming in from the uh, fixed uh, solar products. And beginning to look like they're, they're becoming viable, um, with question marks over the quality of the build. Um, but um, the battery technology and um, solar panel technology now is making it um, um, for prospect. Obviously, into the smart city space, and we need to build upon our CMS system. Um, we believe that lighting is way ahead of the curve, uh, and we're looking to firstly. Uh, subject some um, um, more services into the network that improve the service levels. So this is about the right light at the right place at the right time. Uh, so 
We're looking at the traffic counters. Um, we've got some rain gauge sensors and some ground temperature sensors as well that can all inform the um, dotting policy. We can get air traffic signals integration along with the traffic counters um, to um, make sure that the traffic keeps flowing uh, each period. We're also seeing the value of the data itself. Um, we're currently bringing um, that data on, a, on an open platform, and we're inviting uh, product makers and uh, service providers to use the data to not only improve their service, but to feed back themselves uh, for use cases. Um, other other products we're beginning to integrate are 4G. Uh, this isn't for coverage, but for bandwidth, and we've there is columns of available uh, Ericsson and Philips uh, that are um, providing uh, extra bandwidth, um, which is really to sort of drive the mobile phone um, comfort into the home, into home broadband. We've seen and tested a uh, Li-Fi system, uh, and for those that don't know, uh, that's the rapid uh, flickering of LED light sources to provide a binary data stream, so on, on and off. Uh, communications. Uh, this is being indoor at the moment, um, but we have a desk space in our head office uh, that can be internet via Li Fi. Um, but we're looking to try and expand that out into the public thing arena. Um, Osma technology, although uh, the energy savings are similar to LED, um, we get much better quality of. Uh, of light in terms of specific about the colour temperatures. So we're, we're seeing things like salt barns, things like um, um, special military depots, um, um, ports and, and ferry terminals where the actual the use of plasma can be um, adventitious. And obviously looking forward to uh, the new development in OLED and looking at where we can deploy light services, uh, light on curved services, so curve edges, uh, shop fronts, canopies, um, and uh, any sort of uh, wall infrastructure or building infrastructure. Uh, I've gone through that at quite a pace. Um, so, any questions? Uh, uh, Thank you very much. <coughs> For Arthur in the chalk. Anyone who would like to interview, you can use the little icon next to your name and raise your hand. Um, when I am going to uh, to, um, to Graham, if I get back to the chat, who wanted to. Um, to know more uh, about the case for uh, the small part, I read the question. So, so can you? No questions. Just give you another minute. You're writing in the chat.
I don't have a uh, we don't have so I think I can uh, I can close the webinar. Uh, thank you again to uh, to to all of you who have joined this webinar. Sorry for uh, technical issues. Um, thanks to the speakers for a really uh, very interesting uh, uh, presentation. Um, I can uh, join us for the next webinar on Green ICT. You can to contact me uh, at ITs. Thanks a lot. Have a good okay. good afternoon.